Yeah, there's like no fucking god in any video game. You're always gonna make a mistake, you know? What's the biggest mistake you've made in a video game? For some, it might be an accidental deletion of a world you spent thousands of hours in. Or, if you play games which involve trading, you might have experienced getting scammed out of an item you spent hundreds of hours trying to achieve, only to have it slip out of your hands by another person. No, they want me to trade them. They just took all my items, dude. No! What the fuck? Oh my god, dude. I just got scammed. I just got fucking scammed, dude. If you are a speedrunner, you might have experienced an incorrect input that cost you a world record. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Oh man, I'm so dumb. Most of us who've made mistakes like those could cause us to give up or take a really long break from a video game we loved. Although, for some, big mistakes like these are just a daily occurrence. So why are people crazy enough to dedicate hundreds of hours in a session just to die or quit out of their game and start over? First, before I discuss the world record history, let's talk about the basics of Call of Duty Zombies. Every Call of Duty Zombies game has a round counter. When you beat a round, the zombies will get stronger and increase in volume as well as spawn rate. Because of this, it forces players to use weapons which deal infinite damage or traps which kill zombies on any round, which is really nice if you want to get a high round. Despite these awesome additions, there's one bug that occurs in two games, insta-kill rounds. Starting from round 1 all the way up to round 162, the zombie's health increases. However, on round 163, the zombies have round 1 health. The reason this happens is because the game is coded in 32-bit, which has a maximum signed integer of 2,147,483,647. Once you achieve round 162, the zombie's health hits this limit. However, on round 163, the game tries to go over this limit, but it can't, which causes the zombies to die almost instantly with any weapon. Anyways, back when World at War was released in 2008, it had one map, Nocturne Toten. This was the first map in zombies, and it has 24 zombies around. The reason the map only had 24 zombies around was because the developers thought having a bunch of zombies spawning the higher the round you go would be too hard. And they believed people wouldn't get past round 30. And they were right, people did not achieve round 30 for a couple of months. Because of this, two more maps were added later on that also had 24 zombies around. These maps were Verrucht and Shinonuma. However, on the map Shinonuma, some high rounders were able to achieve round 2000 within a month of the map's release. Although, this would prove a problem to the developers. On the next and final map, Duris, they changed the 24 zombies around to the modern day zombie system, which has more zombies per round the higher you go up. Another difference between the two is World at War has infinite damaging wonder weapons, but one of them is a flamethrower. Counting both of the games, this is the only infinite damaging wonder weapon that does not kill instantly. Because of this, it can be really useful when you want to slow down the zombies when hoarding up, and it can give you drops. On Nocturne and Toen, there are four drops. A max ammo, double points, insta-kill, and a nuke. Max ammo and double points are pretty obvious. Max ammo refills your ammo, and double points, well, doubles your points. An insta-kill makes the zombies die in one hit with any weapon, and the nuke kills all the remaining zombies on the round. Okay, I'm going to stop with the information as I wanted to explain the basics of the game to you, and if I continued on and on, this video would get super boring. So, from now on, I'll explain additional information as we go through the records. On March 7, 2009, the first documented record was posted. A player named Repucia 4 achieved round 36, which was pretty impressive at the time. The reason this record was impressive is due to the game being released 5 months prior. Also, 
It was the only Zombies map until March 19th with the release of Verruckt, and no one had come up with an efficient strategy. Because of this, the only strategy used was running around in circles in the mystery box room with the door leading to the starting room closed. Despite the major flaws with the strategy, it would be used for an additional two years. Three months later, a new world record was documented. Achieved by CGF, they would achieve round 43 using the same strategy Repucia made. Sadly, this would be CGF's only record, and he would eventually upload his last video over 10 years ago on January 30th, 2011. However, that didn't stop CGF from making a small legacy for himself. Unlike Repucia's record, which stood for only 4 months, CGF's record would stand for over a year and two months. Until summer of 2010, the round 43 record seemed impossible to beat. But then, on August 14th of 2010, a player named Mariness would blow the previous world record out of the water. The round Mariness achieved was round 151, tripling the previous world record. Despite using the same strategy as the previous world record holders did, Mariness changed the way the strategy was used. Unlike using a Thompson to kill the zombies, he used a flamethrower. If you remember earlier, the flamethrower can kill on any round, which explains why he was able to achieve round 151. Because Marinus achieved such a high round, this record would not be broken until two years later. On November 7, 2012, a new world record would make it into the record books. Achieved by the relaxing end, he made it all the way up to round 311 doubling the previous world record. Unlike the previous world records, Relaxing used a different strategy. Instead of training in the mystery box room, he trained in the starting room. This allowed for more consistent board ups, and it made the rounds faster. Because the strategy was so consistent, and Relaxing record became famous within the zombies community, would remain as the main strategy for the next seven and a half years. Despite Relaxing's insane world record, it would only take four months for it to be broken. On February 15, 2013, a player named Awkwardly Sneaky would achieve round 505, making him the first person to make it halfway to round 1000, and being the first record to start a line of multiple new world records within the span of just two years. Just like Relaxing's previous world record, Sneaky would use the same strategy. He also used the same weapons, the starting pistol, aka the Colt, and of course the flamethrower, which is a good weapon combo. However, in modern day standards, this isn't a good weapon setup because of how much slower you'll play. But, back in the day, people used a Colt as it was the fastest weapon to run around with. Because of this, it allowed players to escape situations a little bit easier. Anyways, let's get back on track. As impressive as Sneaky's record was, it wouldn't take long until it was broken again. On November 27th, 2013, a player named Gurkrafu would beat the previous world record by 70 rounds. Just like the previous two world records, he ran the same strategy and weapon setup. Unfortunately for Gurkrafu, this record didn't stand for very long. In fact, this would remain as the second shortest record held on this map. Two 
few months later, Kyrie78 would upload his record of round 632, beating the previous record by 57 rounds. Just like the three previous world records, he ran the same strategy. However, there's one change he made. Instead of using the Colt as the weapon to run around with, he used the Thompson. Despite being slower than the Colt, the change in movement was almost undetectable. Also, the Thompson allowed for faster and safer insta-kill rounds. On top of the change in weapons, there's another thing Kyrie proved. Round 1000 was possible. Unlike the previous records which did make it more than halfway to 1000, Kyrie proved this by going more than 60% of the way. However, unlike what most people would expect, it wouldn't take long before round 1000 was reached. On October 27th, 2014, nearly five years since World at War's release, Kyle Booth would achieve round 1016, making him the first person to achieve round 1000 on Nocturne Toten, as well as the first person to nearly break the record by over 400 rounds. Just like Kyrie, Kyle Booth used the same weapon setup which remains as the main weapon setup people use to this day. Surprisingly, this record wouldn't stand for long. In February 2015, a unknown, yet unique, and extremely talented World at War player would take this record. Who is that person, you ask? Dupree. Unlike most zombie players, Dupree was one of the first players to say playing fast matters. I know some of you are surprised by this because I made a video a few weeks ago explaining how zombies is one of the greatest speedruns. So why did it take someone 7 years to say speedrunning mattered? Well, at the time players did not know what caused a reset. If you don't know, the game resets all the way back to round 1 after a specific amount of game time. As an example, the map Nocturne Tone has a maximum reset time of around 160 hours on World at War, essentially meaning after playing 160 in-game hours, your game will reset all the way back to round 1. But because players didn't know what caused the reset, they thought you would reset based on how lucky you got. Surprisingly, resets weren't the reason why Dupree said playing fast mattered. The reason he said playing fast mattered is because you can get to a higher round quicker, and if you do set the world record at a fast pace, a player who is attempting to beat it, and plays slower than you, actually has a higher chance of dying because they stayed in the game longer. Unfortunately, nobody believed Dupree during this time as high rounds were focused on getting the highest round possible, and not trying to play as fast as possible. Despite players not believing him, Dupree would prove otherwise in early 2015. In February 2015, Dupree would achieve the new Nocturne Totem world record of round 1245, making this his first solo high round world record and the fastest knocked game for its time, remaining so for the next five and a half years. On top of that, Dupree would be one of the first players to use a flamethrower during the horde up. This allowed him to stun the zombies and make the horde up safer. And it allowed his game to be slightly faster because he was damaging the zombies early on. As impressive as this record was, it wouldn't take long until another player beat it. If you've been in the zombies community for a while, you might have heard of this name. However, if you're unfamiliar with this game, you might be confused as to why this name is such a big deal. Starting around 2014, Jim would slowly get a following from his high rounds on World at War. 
At the time, people who watched him thought he was an ordinary high rounder trying to achieve a world record like the rest of the community. Unknown to them, Jim would become one of the greatest World at War players ever. See, unlike most high rounders, Jim was able to get high round world records relatively fast. Some might argue he was lucky enough to have a series of fortunate events come together. While some of that might be true, I think the sheer knowledge and relentlessness Jim had on this game is what made him such a unique and good player among the rest of the community. Hence, explains why he was able to hold half the high round world records at one time. In December 2015, Jim would achieve his first high round world record of round 1,276, beating the previous world record by only a mere 31 rounds. However, unlike Dupree's world record, Jim's world record was similar to all of the previous world records before Dupree, which doesn't sound that impressive, and in some ways you're right, beating the previous world record by only 31 rounds and being over 2 hours slower isn't the most ideal world record. Despite this, Jim's record would remain famous within the Zombies community. Why you ask? Well, unlike the previous records, Jim's would stand the longest. As surprising as it sounds, Jim's record would stand for not one year, not two years, not three years, but four years. Despite the countless of attempts to break it, not a single person could come close to beating it besides one person. Who you ask? That's right, it's Dupree. <laughs> Even though his record was broken, that didn't stop him from trying to get it back. In fact, it would encourage him to break it even more. Starting around 2016, Dupree would find a new strategy. Unlike opening the entire map and keeping the help door closed, he kept the rest of the map closed and kept the help door open, essentially making the map involve two rooms, the starting room and the mystery box room. On paper, the strategy looks hard as hell, and you are right, it definitely can be tricky. Although, instead of training in the starting room, the strategy trained in the mystery box room. Despite the room being twice as small as the starting room, it allowed for easier hoard ups by abusing the pillars in the room, which allowed zombies to separate a little bit easier. On top of that, the room involved less glitches and bugs than the starting room, which means it was more consistent. And because the strategy abused the pillars, it allowed players to use a flamethrower more to stun the zombies. In the process, players will unintentionally damage the zombies more than the starting room hoard up, which allowed the strategy to be faster. However, there is one problem. Back in 2016, Dupree hadn't figured out the best and safest way to hoard up in the room. Because of this, he would only achieve round 416. His new personal best in the strategy would remain the highest he'd get until February 2020. Despite the new discovery, Nobody would dare to attempt it. Why? Well, during this time, relaxing the world record of round 311 made the help door close strategy the main strategy everybody used. Because of this, people used it as it was the safest strategy at the time, and nobody thought achieving the world record running one door would be possible. Hell, even Dupree wasn't sure if it was possible. Despite the countless efforts from other players attempting it, and having the best player on the map trying out a new strategy, the record would stand for another three years. On November 2019, a very unique and unknown player would come out of the blue and shatter Jim's record. Who is the person you ask? Abu Sharif. If you're familiar with Crash Bandicoot speedruns, this player most likely comes to mind. 
Surprisingly, this wasn't the only game he could demolish. World at War was another game he could crush. On November 14, 2019, Abu Sharif would upload his world record of round 2019, making this the first time anyone has beaten the world record by over 500 rounds, and making this the first time anyone achieved round 2000 on the map. To put that in perspective, this was the first time in almost 4 years the record was broken. Instead of a record beating the previous world record by only a couple hundred rounds, Abu Sharif nearly doubled it. On top of that, this was the first time since 2009 another map achieved round 2000. Although, there was a problem. See, unlike the previous world records which had a majority or full gameplay, Abu did not have that. In fact, he was missing 79% of his gameplay. Because of this, me and a few other players were skeptical about this record and eventually called out Abu Sharif to see if he did have full gameplay. Sadly, he didn't because his Wi-Fi wasn't good enough to stream. Because of this, he had to record his gameplay. Although, he didn't have enough space on his computer. Because of this, we were still skeptical. Me and some other players wrote off his record as cheated or due to a lack of gameplay. So why am I listing this as a world record? Well, in summer of 2020, Abu redeemed himself by achieving the Varukt High Round World Record, and this time he did have full gameplay. Because of this, me and the other players dropped our claims and eventually came to the conclusion that Abu's 2019 knock game was also the world record. Surprisingly, this record wouldn't stand anywhere near as long as Jim's record. On August 28, 2020, Chief Legit would achieve his new world record of round 2,511. Just like Abu's world record, he would beat the previous world record by nearly 500 rounds. However, there was something different about this record the previous ones didn't do. Remember when I was talking about Dupree's one door strat? Well, Chief Legit did just that. Hold up, before I continue, we need to rewind a year before Chief's record. Back in summer of 2019, Dupree would play the first version of Noct, aka pre-patch Noct. Unlike the patch version, the flamethrower dealt a lot more damage, and it killed zombies faster. Because of this, it allowed the game to be a little easier. This was nice for Dupree as he could figure out a way to hoard up better unlike the previous three years which he was struggling to do. But then, he found the golden hoard up. The hoard up you're watching on the screen is the same hoard up Dupree would use to beat his patch PB and achieve round 916, eventually beating it a year later and achieving round 2871 in February of 2020. This same hoard up would be used in Chief's world record, essentially proving knocked one door was usable for the world record. Sadly, Chief would die due to not noticing a zombie beside him, ending his game with just two hits. Alright, I know some of you are confused. Just moments ago I said Dupree achieved around 2,871, which is above Chief's world record. But why didn't I say Dupree achieved the world record too? Well, in October of 2020, another player would take the world record. On September 30th, 2020, I would launch up a knocked game. Playing Doris a couple hours earlier, I eventually got bored and decided to play knocked just for the enjoyment. When I launched up the map, I ended up getting a setup, which, unknowing to me, would lead to a world record. Starting from day one, I'd played this game over the course of 21 days, taking me a total of 95 in-game hours, eventually reaching round 5,262, downing to a bug zombie. Surprisingly, this record is very beatable. 
theoretically speaking, you can reach round 9,000 before you hit the reset. Although, you would need to play an average of 6 hours every day over the course of a 25 day span before you black screen. But, that doesn't mean the record's impossible. Just because one person achieved round 5,000 doesn't mean you should stop. In fact, multiple people have been on pace or close to beating the record. Anyways, thanks for watching and please check out the players I mentioned in the video. Peace and take care.